Music brings welcome relief in this difficult land. Singing especially seems to lift their spirits. Which is just as well. The drought has made hunting so difficult, there's been no meat in the village for months. Corn millet can occasionally be bought from the store in Sumque. But with money in very short supply, the women must still rely on their traditional gathering skills. And besides, bush food is tastier. Choosing the right area to find enough food is only one of the problems. Actually getting there is another. The parched ground is crawling with hidden danger. Black mambas, scorpions and spiders whose bite will never heal are a constant presence. So they've developed an extraordinary ability to scan the ground while they walk, looking through the grass rather than at it, alert to the slightest movement. In these extreme temperatures they walk in silence, fearful that if they were to laugh or sing the sun would hear them and thinking they like the heat would obligingly make it hotter. Even so, to survive these temperatures they must find a source of water quickly. This seed pod is camouflaged and difficult to find, but the women know that its roots grow in the form of a tuber, which can hold sufficient water for a drink. Everyone must sit down, believing that if the tuber hears their footsteps, it will dig itself deeper. One woman only will begin to dig in the concrete-like ground, the others saving energy until they know there are tubers here. Hidden in this grass are the fallen seeds of the marula tree. They're similar to walnuts, but the heat has dried the kernel, so although there are plenty about, they're not very nutritious. In fact, they're often eaten as a snack instead of carrying them all the way home. <laughs> In October, it's the towering baobab tree that offers an abundance of tasty, nutritious fruit. It isn't difficult to find either. Known as the upside-down tree, because the branches resemble roots, it can be seen dominating the landscape throughout Bushmanland. Everything from birds to elephants feast on these fruit, so the women must gather all they can. The skin is tough and woody. Inside is a tasty but bone-dry citrusy flesh, which can be eaten raw or made into a mush for children. The people of Laura have access to a modern health clinic some 40 kilometers away. But if you have general problems with your eyes and a bit of neck ache like this woman, it's quicker to use the services of the village doctor. The traditional approach to most ailments is to grind up the charcoal of a local tree root and introduce it directly into the bloodstream. It's believed to heal just about anything. For the 
hunter, the day starts early. In this drought over the past few months, it's been rare to see game, let alone catch anything. So the more time you give yourself, the better. The dusty conditions here aren't all bad. Every morning you can look at the ground and read it like a newspaper and there are written the movements of the animals from the previous night. But of course, these guys are reading at university level. To even begin to understand what they're seeing, you have to have a few fundamentals in the art of tracking. OK, you now have the sun behind you. I'll make a print. But from where you are, it's very difficult to see any of the shape or form of that track. But if you come around to my point of view, you'll see how the shadows really help. Here's something from the book of tracking that's well worth knowing. Tracks that are overall round in shape, with four toes, no claws, and a rear pad that has three distinct lobes are members of the cat family. And that is one big pussycat. That large rear lobe shows that it's a lion. And of course, knowing that they're a lion about helps to keep the Bushman off the lion's menu. You'll rarely see a Bushman run. Sweating heavily in this heat would mean having to drink almost continuously throughout the day. And for what little water can be found, there's fierce competition. One of the problems with finding water in a land as arid as this is that you've got to compete with all the other animals. Those elephants over there need up to 100 litres a day each to survive here. So they're drinking with attitude. If I was to go over there now to try and get some, I'd have a 